So, my name is Sergey Lucic. I'll be talking about statistics that optimize the needs for optimizing quest how it works in MariaDB and MySQL. So about me, I I work in MariaDB Corporation, and I was MySQL developer working on MySQL source code since 1998 for like 12 years. Now I'm working on MariaDB since 2010, 2010, 2010. And yes, I might start talking too fast, and if that happens, just give me a shout and ask me to slow down, then I'll do that. So about the top, what things optimize, and what data, what statistic optimizer would need to optimize a query? Optimizer, when it needs some data, it asks the engine, and it can ask the engine questions like, how big is the table, how many rows does the table have, or would it cost in some abstract cost units to scan the whole table, or maybe not the whole table, but read a certain number of rows from a specific index. Or, for example, it wants to read the whole table, but just wants to know how many distinct different values are in the index. For example, you just need to compare the all values in the table in the row with a specific constant number and wants to know how many rows it'll find. Or how many of this, not as one value, but a range. And then it optimizer would want to know how many values approximately will be in the range. And they, all this stuff optimizer wants to know before it executes the query, and it should be, be very cheap to do that so that it would not make the query execution much slower. So this is how it used to work since since the year I started working in MySQL. And there are a few problems with this approach. First, it's this results are not always stable. Some storage engine, notably in ADB, it was doing the statistics by doing random index dives, that is, it goes randomly into the B tree and probes the depth and values and tries to estimate the, the statistical values. And because dives are random, then you get instead you can repeat the same query, you get different same result, but you get different statistics for the optimizer. And those two, the two tests were done on DBT3 benchmarks, which are complex analytical queries. And in a query called Q8, which is called Na National Market Share Query, it joins eight in the DB tables, and by repeating the same query many times, I saw four different execution plans. The fastest was seven minutes, the longest was 1.2 hours. There is statistics that you get at, for every particular execution. It's one of the, it depends on what statistics randomly in a DB saw and report to the optimizer. An optimizer would choose the best plan that it thinks is the best based on these somewhat random statistics. For, DB, for Q7 query, it, was, it joins six in a DB tables. That was even worse, so I saw it's seven different plans. The fastest was 12 minutes, and the longest, I just waited for many hours, and then I aborted the query. I just got tired of waiting, so I don't know how long it would have taken. So it's not good when you run the query, you don't know how long it'll take. Now, you may ask what's about in a DB persistent statistic, which exists in a DB for quite many years already. It helps a little bit, but not much. What it does, it still repeats those random dice, and then stores those results in a table persistently. So next time you ask, you'll get exactly the same values. So yeah, you see the query will be, you'll get always the same execution plan, it'll be always repeatable, but you don't know which one out of those seven different plans you'll get. So if you're lucky, you'll get the plan, which is, you'll always get this 12 minute plan. If you're unlucky, you'll always get multi-hour plan, and you don't know which one you will get, because Again, statistics computed randomly and then st stored for f further executions. Another problem, when the server asks the engine to report statistics, it, the server doesn't know how the engine does it, and the engine might lie, and some engines do lie. And in this example, so there's a table with uh, three integer columns, and I create a key, and I populate the table, I insert 400,000 rows, and every value is a random number between 0 and 10 th and 100,000. So there can be only 100,000 different values because that's how values are generated from 0 to 100,000. And then I do select count distinct, which is exact calculation of how many different values are there. And indeed, the number is slightly less than 100,000, which is what one would expect. And now let's see the incorrect the storage engine estimation of how many different values are there. 
such engine does its magic, it calculates approximately the number of values and gets something very similar, which is good. And this is my ISM. And now if you, I alter table into InnoDB and I repeat the same, InnoDB say, says that it's about 200,000 distinct values in the column, while all the values are integers between 0 and 100,000. That's technically impossible to, get, to have that many different values in the index. Why InnoDB is doing that? Because sometime many, many years ago, like basically when I started working in MySQL, the one and single only author of InnoDB at that time so that in, the, in some query the result was not the best plan and if he will just like to optimize about number of rows he'll get a better plan for this query and that's what he did and then for many years NDB was lying about estimations and this was fixed in MySQL 8.0 but it's not really a big problem on itself because if it always reports double number of rows then all the still comparisons will be correct and optimizer will still choose the correct plan it becomes a problem when there are optimizer needs to compare statistics from the InnoDB with statistics that optimizer gets some other way from another engine, for example, or from temporary table. And then optimizer can no longer properly compare plans because those numbers are just not comparable. So the third problem, of course, to get all the statistics, a uh, storage engine needs an index. And index, it's good. It makes the queries faster. It allows to get the statistics but it takes the storage space on disk and it needs to be always updated on insert, update, delete, so it takes time. And sometimes you just need the statistics, you don't really need an index itself. And then index might be too expensive. The, sol the solution to all these problems was something that in MariaDB it's called engine independent table statistics. This is statistics calculated by the server and not uh, by asking an engine, so it's engine independent. And it's stored, so it's persistent and it's not recalculated every time. So it's stable, it's precise, it's identical for all engines. It's detailed because this statistics calculates more data than actually a storage engine can tell from the index. And it's comparable because it's calculated in engine-independent way, so for all storage engines, they cannot lie there. They are always ca calculated identically, so it could be compared the plan for in a DB and plan for my ISM and decide in what order to join them, for example. So I will not exactly explain how it works and what it does. I'll just give you some pointers to the manual and then if you're really interested you either take a picture of the slide or you check my talk later and then you see the manual explaining all those things in details. But just very briefly there are new tables in the MySQL schema which stores all the statistics. Statistics is can be configured using use stat tables which tell the optimizer when optimizer can use those tables those statistical data and optimizer use condition selectivity tells in what exactly what exactly parts of the data optimizer can use and this is what I will mostly talk in for the rest of the talk and analyze table just used to collect all the statistics still all anal old analyze, ta analyze tables will still work and do that or one can be very specific and say for what indexes and what columns analyze tables should collect the statistics but those pl pl those clauses are optional and simple analyze table as before will still work. And now let's get to examples. <laughs> for examples, I use the employee database, which is referenced from MySQL manual, and it's a product of Giuseppe Maxia on this is his GitHub and uh, employee database. It's not a very big data set, but it's still 167 megabytes and 300,000 places. So it's not a very small one either. It's something one can reasonably use to show how optimizer works. So first we need to load it. To load employee database, it's easy, just one source and f file, and then it includes lots of load data internally. And then we enable stat tables by setting new stat tables preferably, and then we do analyze without any additional clauses. As you see, it's, it's not a very big database because it took only 18 seconds to calculate statistics for all the, all the tables. So, and the default behavior of optimized use condition selectivity was before MySQL turn for MariaDB turn form one, and value one means do not use up engine dependencies at all. And then we do a query which needs to show all the employees, all the all the managers from all the departments. So we have table departments join with 
table employees, find everybody by title is a manager, and then print all that. And this is execute. Oops. This is 15 seconds because it's not a very big data set. And the column title in the employee table is not indexed, so optimizer doesn't really know what to do with that. It needs to do the table scan. Now we enable use condition selectivity 3, which means optimizer is now allowed to use per column statistics from the engine independent statistics, even without any indexes. So we repeat the same query. As you see, it's 16 times faster. It's below a second now. Now, why, why did that happen? The first part of the slide is the old execution plan without any column statistics. And if you, if you see at the filtered column, filtered column is, it shows in percents how many rows optimizer thinks will pass the where clause. And here optimizer doesn't know anything, so it just says thinks 100% and goes for with that assumption. And this is the order in which the tables are joined. Now, if we enable per column statistics, optimizer can immediately see from the column statistics that title, the title manager is not really that much present. N certainly not all the employees are managers. This is a reasonable company. And so optimizer thinks that it would be better to join tables in different order. It puts the title, full table scan on the titles table first, and this is gives, gives 16 times speed up. Histograms. Let me explain what is equi-height histogram first. This is a normal, not equi-height histogram. It's histogram that you most usually see everywhere. This is equi-width histograms, and all buckets are of the same width. And this would be equi-height histogram, where all buckets are of the same height, and the length of the bucket, width of the bucket, is proportional to the... Uh, no, not length. So the area, un area under the curve must be the same for every bucket. So when the curve is high, the bucket gets narrower to keep the area this identical. And why would anyone want that? Now, let's see, we only remember the width of the buckets or the heights of the bucket and that histogram. And then we forget the curve. You want to restore the curve because that's what optimizer will be doing. It needs to reverse engineer the curve based from the histogram. And this is how it would look from the equi-height histogram. And for equi-width histogram, you can see that we get one big bucket for the tail, which is not really interesting part of the distribution. But the important part, where if you do a small mistake, you'll get a huge difference in values, is described much more precisely. So equi-height histogram allows you to describe the, the distribution much more precisely, giving the same number of buckets as the equi-width histograms. And this is what MariaDB and MySQL are using for histograms. So let's, let's look at the example how optimizer can use those equi-height histograms. Because histograms are useful when there's a non-uniform distribution of data. For example, in this employee database, let's calculate the midpoint salary, take the minimum and maximum salary. In, in between, it'll be about 100,000 some monetary units. And let's see how many employees have the salary above this midpoint salary. So we're not interested in the result here, but there are the query took 18 seconds, almost 19 seconds. And if you enable histograms, we'll see that it goes three times faster, only in less than, less than seven seconds. Now, why did, why did that happen? Because again, even with column statistics, but without histograms, Optimize doesn't really know how many queries will satisfy the where clause. So Optimizer can see that the value is between the minimal and the maximal, exactly between. So Optimizer thinks it'll be about 50% of salaries that will pass the midpoint. And you can see here that's almost 50%. But in this employee database, like in the real world, salaries are distributed very non-uniformly. So if we enable statistics histograms, optimizer can see that only less than 5% than salaries lie above the salary midpoint. In this sense, and in this case, optimizer decides it's much better to scan the salaries table first. This gives the th three times speed up that we have seen on the previous slides. This is histograms really help here. And the last feature in the, this optimi 
engine independent statistics thing, which is not really engine independent statistics, but it's controlled by the same variable. It's called sampling. It's useful when per column, per column statistics doesn't help, when histograms doesn't help, and basically nothing else helps. Then optimizer can use this trick, it's, which is called sampling. And this is a query that looks for average salary for all employees whose names ends with off. Like, I don't know, Ivanov, Smirnov, stuff like that. And this is a query that, I don't know, HR department can, can use if somebody accuses them of, I don't know, racial profiling and not paying all the employees equally. And then they won't calculate average salary for all those employees. So, but it doesn't matter what it returns, it took five seconds, and if we enable sampling, it'll be 0 0.4 seconds, less than one second, so six times faster. And why would that happen? Because, again, if you see like and percent, then optimizer cannot use indexes, then statistics and histograms don't help. Optimizer has no idea how many rows will pass the way close, and that ends up with 100% filtered, and this specific join order. And if you enable, sam enable sampling, then optimizer will do the following trick. It'll start reading the table, it start calculating this like clause for all the rows. It'll read 100 of rows, and the hundred number of 100 is configured. It'll see that only very few rows pass, actual rows from the table, pass this where clause. Then optimizer can extrapolate that, and here optimizer estimates that only about 1% of rows will pass this like of where clause. In this case, it makes sense to start scanning the in a play table first. And this small percent of rows that will pass the where clause join with the other variables. Optimize the changes the join order, and you get six times speed up. So this everything I was talking about up to now, it's a, not a new feature. It's very it's significantly old. It's a very time prone feature. It was in first introduced in 2014 in MariaDB 10.0. And MariaDB 10.0 is so old that it's now out of support. So if you want to find the oldest version, old, oldest MariaDB version that still has this, it'll be, ten, it'll be MariaDB 10.1. But this was out used in production si since at least 2014. And in MariaDB 10.0, this engine independent statistics collected number of rows per table and number of distinct values per index. And for every column indexed or not indexed, it collects number of distinct values, minimal maximal values, amount of nulls and histograms, and sampling. In MySQL 8.0, which went in 2018, they added a feature which is called Optimized Statistics, which is very similar and conceptually. It, they don't collect per table or per index data, but they do collect per column amount of nulls Equihide and singleton histograms, and MariaDB does not support singleton insta histograms. And singleton histograms, they work very well, much better than Equihide histograms, if you have only very few distinct values, like you have a column with, I don't know, sex or yes, now, things like that. This is where his singleton histograms work better. And in MariaDB, in MySQL 8.0, histograms collection, if you have a really, really huge table, then Histogram collection was analyzed table was faster in MySQL 8.0 than in MariaDB because if MySQL would notice that the table is really big, it wouldn't try to collect all the data. It would start skipping values, like taking every fifth or every tenth or whatever value to keep the data inside small. It would still do a reasonably good representation of the data for statistical purposes, but it would have been much faster. And that's MySQL 8.0. And in MariaDB 10.4, which is J this year in June, I think, or in May, the important differences between all the MariaDB versions that this engine independent statistics is now enabled by default. So if you upgrade, it'll just start working faster, even if we didn't enable anything. And in MariaDB 10.4, histograms are collected also by sampling. So that should be histogram collection should be fast even if the table is really big. To, 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 it, it can be controlled with the variable analyze sample percentage, which is if it's set to 100, it means all 100 da all 100 percent of data should be used for histograms, which is the old behavior. And zero means it doesn't it doesn't mean do not use any data for histograms. It means automatically decide how much data you want to use histogram. So zero is the recommended value.
And that's MariaDB 10.4. In MariaDB 10.5, we plan to have more advances to the sampling and to engine independent statistics. But that's all for now. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No questions. Okay. Yep. No, my, so the question was about uh, in G, so that in DB was lying, and they changed it. It's not doing that anymore. And how comes that other engines are lying? The thing is that optimizer asks the engine how many rows are in the table. The exact correct value would be to go into the table and to count all the rows. And optimizer does not know how the engine. Basically, it's out of optimizer control. It's out of the server control. The engine is a separate piece of code, which technically can be, and usually is, developed by different people with their own agenda. And optimizer does not know what the engine is doing. It might, for example, there's a memory engine, which always keeps tables in memory. And it used to, if you did ask how many rows will match the specific value, it used, or how many rows are no, it didn't support ranges. Yeah, how many rows will match this value? It used to answer 10. No, mat no matter the table, no matter the value, it will always say 10. So the point is that optimizer does not know what engine is doing and has no control over that. It may lie, and it's very dangerous to just change optimizer values like in a DB was doing because for one query you change to work better, you will get 10 other ones that start working, working worse and you don't see them immediately. It's, it's longer when users start complaining to you. But in, I don't know, 1999, it was probably less of a concern than it is now. There were less us users and less complex queries. But <coughs> the, the idea is that optimizer just simply doesn't know what engine is doing. So engine, if different engines use different ways to calculate those statistical data. Some may lie, some may not lie, but they use like, I don't know, adjusting coefficients that do what, that may be just two, like in the DB, or something else. The engines are just doing an estimate. Engine doing estimate, and usually they do it by, so that's a set of queries, and then if the engine author finds that a particular query performs worse, and if the He'll multiply the result by two. He'll get better results and more satisfying customer. Then, of course, the author engine would be very inclined to do that. And it makes every engine adjusting results for some specific use case differently. And it makes results non-comparable. One engine answers 10. The other engine answers 5. And you don't, don't know if 10 is really greater than 5 or maybe they calculate so differently that five is greater than ten in this particular case. This this why it, that's why it's very important to have uniform procedure to collect in statistics identically for all engines to make the numbers comparable, so that you know the ten is always larger than five. Right? Yes. Any other question? Yes, please. Um, why do you uh, have to set the environment uh, variable to activate uh, that the um, to, to activate the statistic usage yes this one yes why what I didn't understand the question um, why do you need uh, to set the variable that, um to, to, to enable statistics yeah. because I want the because analyze table will only collect statistics automatically if it's set to preferably if I would say this set it to never for example 
then a penalized table would only collect only work with engine and would not collect the engine dependent statistics. But then I could have written analyze table persistent for and then make analyze table to collect statistics by using a separate syntax for analyze. Or I can enable use that tables and then analyze table will oops analyze table will also collect the statistics. For example, if you have an old application that you cannot easily write the queries, then you can just enable stat tables and application will just continue doing analyze as before, but it will just collect more data. Did I answer your question? Okay. Thank you.